Good day, students. My name is Fanny Yisonde Olateju, your literature and English teacher. Our topic for today's literature lesson is the analysis of non-African poem titled The Good Moral by John Donne, a metaphysical poet. Lesson objectives. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to discuss the themes of the poem, analyze the poem in terms of poetic devices, explain the events in the poem, and examine the cause and effect in the poem. The original poem will be read by Richard Burton. I wonder by my troth what thou and I did till we loved. Were we not weaned till then, but sucked on country pleasures childishly? Or snorted we in the seven sleepers' den? T'was so. But this all pleasures fancies be. If ever any beauty I did see which I desired and got, T'was but a dream of thee. And now good morrow to our waking souls, which watch not one another out of fear, for love, all love of other sights controls, and makes one little room and everywhere. Let sea discover us to new worlds have gone, let maps to other worlds on worlds have shown, let us possess one world, each hath one, and is one. My face in thine eye, thine in mine appears, and true plain hearts do in the faces rest, where can we find two better hemispheres without sharp north, without declining west? Whatever dies was not mixed equally. If our two loves be one, or thou and I love so alike that none do slacken, none can die. Summary of the poem, stanza one. The poem is a dramatic monologue because the persona is directly addressing and talking to his lover without a response or reply from his lover. He asks four rhetorical questions at once. The persona wonders what type of life or what picture of reckless pleasures govern his life and his beloved before they actually engage in real love. What was their existence like before they met? Were they not like an infant who depended on his mother's breast for survival? Were they not asleep in the seven sleepers' den? The simple answer is that before the lovers met, any pleasures and immoralities they engaged in were a figment of imagination or shadows of enjoyment. The persona says that the lady he desires and gets in his dream is the present lady who is his lover. Stanza 2 The seven sleepers earlier mentioned are the seven persecuted Christians who slept for 200 years. The seven sleepers depict the irrelevancies of the lovers in the past. Presently, the mature love of the lovers has awakened their sleeping souls as they consider their little bedroom as the entire world. The persona bids good morning, that is, good moral, to the waking souls of himself and his lover because their past experiences are reflection of darkness of sleep. The lovers watch the actions of each other, not out of fear and jealousy. The little bedroom where the lovers stayed together has been converted to the entire universe. Otherwise, the real world beyond their bedroom is meaningless and valueless to them. The persona ignores the world around him. Hence, the sea discoverers may discover new ways. Men may voyage across the sea to other lands. Maps may be spread and 
Men may even chart the locations of the other worlds, but the persona tell his lover that they have no interest in all the discoveries. The persona simply affirms that his body is a new world for his lover to explore and her body is a world for him to possess and explore. We will pause here briefly. When we come back, we'll continue with summary of the poem. Student, welcome to the second segment, which is continuation of poems summary, stanza three. The persona see his face directly reflect in his beloved eyes and her face reflect in his. The lovers' eyes are exposed to each other as their faces demonstrate. To show that love is universal and a permanent phenomenon, the poet uses the concept of hemispheres, that is, half worlds, to paint the picture that his lover is his other half, and he is other half of a lover. The persona assert that his hemisphere and his lover's hemisphere are superior to art's hemispheres because their genuine love has no cold north pole and no declining west. Another idiom metaphor is deciphered in beginning of quotation. Whatever dies was not missed equally. End of quotation. The metaphor from the alchemy in relation to, to the love making means that a love that died is one where the two lovers do not love each other with equal strength. Students, we want to consider the thematic preoccupation of the poem. A. Permanent and true love. The true love that exists between the persona and this lover is not based on their past pleasures until they fall in love presently. The true love, which is permanent and universal phenomenon, is presented in beginning of quotation. Let us possess one word, each at one, and is one. My face is time, highs. Time in mine appears, and true plain art do in the faces rest. End of quotation. In other words, the poet believes that the sight of each other far exceeds any fondness they have for other pleasant sights. Even their bedroom where they enjoyed has become their world. Hence, the real world beyond their bedroom is meaningless to them. Another theme is childhood love experiences. All the rhetorical questions at the beginning of the poem demonstrate that the past lives of the lovers before they actually engage in love are nothing but country players. Their past lives are like a child suckling his mother's breast for survival. The suckling child is ignorant, innocent, and unaware of the world situations. Although their past pleasures are mere fancies, the poet considers their childhood experience of love as an ordinary sleeping in seven sleepers' den. Another theme is immortality of love. The ideal love is not only immortal, it makes the lover immortal too. Beginning of quotation. If our true love be one, or thou and high, love so alike that those lacking none can die. End of quotation. In another sense, the persona is of the opinion that if their love for each other is felt equally strong on both sides, 
then their love cannot die. The meaning of beginning of quotation, whatever died was not missed equally, end of quotation, is that a love that die is one where the two lovers do not love each other with equal strength. Students, there are other themes like growth and maturity, sensuality, the futility and vanity of life, and reckless pleasures. All these themes are embedded in the themes earlier discussed above. We will pause here briefly. Students, welcome to the last segment of today's lesson, which is Poetic Devices of the Poem, The Good Moro. One, conversational style. The style employed by the poet is a conversational one, and it is a good example of dramatic monologue. The Good Moro is a poem in which an imagined speaker, who is a poet persona, addresses a silent listener who is his lover. The speaker addresses his lover wondering aloud about their reckless past lives and commenting on the state of their existing, existence presently. Beginning of quotation. If ever any beauty I did see, which I desired and got, it was but a dream of T. End of quotation. Lines 6 to 7. 2. The use of archaic language. The diction of the poem reflects the 17th century words like trot, thou, time, good morrow, etc. There are other words that demonstrate the background of history like seven slippers. Then, geography, like sharp knots, and astronomy, like declining west. Also, the metaphor in the poem reflects the idea from philosophy, theology, and alchemy. Three, the use of antithesis. The poet persona compares his past life with the present one, weighing them side by side and reaches a conclusion that the present life is more fruitful than his past, as in line 3, beginning of quotation. But suck on the country's pleasures childishly, end of quotation. 4. The use of allusion. The poet uses allusion of the legend of of the seven sleepers Jane. This is a reference to seven Christians persecuted and were reputed to have slept for 200 years. The past life, lives of the lovers are compared to darkness of sleep. 5. The use of rhetorical questions. The abrupt colloquial opening is characteristic of Don's love poems. A dude wakes up next to his lover and asks some questions that concern their past lives thus. Beginning of quotation. What thou and I did till we loved? End of quotation lines 1 to 2. Sees the use of hyperbole. The entire poem is full of exaggeration, as in beginning of quotation, and makes one little rooms everywhere. End of quotation line 11. The speaker asserts that their love has converted their small room into the entire world. Also, the last line of the poem shows that the lover's mutual adoration has grown to the level that they cannot die again. Students, there are other poetic devices, but the one we discuss above are the basic ones. 
likely examination questions. One, discuss the use of hyperbole in the poem. Two, examine the theme of love is pleasurable and pleasurable is love. Bibliography, Fanny S.O., 2019, Exam Reflection Literature in English for WAEC, NECO, and UTME, 2021-2025, to published by Souvenirs Press Limited, Lagos. 2. Richard Burton's Voice, Reading John Donne's Poem, The Good Moral on YouTube. Thank you very much. God bless you.